At the time of these shots at Brighton Marina, there were no waves and it was mid-tide. The west breakwater of the marina was designed to extend further than the east breakwater because the waves predominantly come from the southwest. Thus, the opening faces the southeast. Still, waves do occasionally come from the southeast, and thus protection elements exist within the harbor as well, such as the north and south wave screens, and the sanding beach. Additionally, the circular design of the harbor helps mitigate wave reflections, helping keep the inside of the harbor safe. Seasons do not dominate the sea's behavior, conditions dominate. For example, a strong September gale damaged three Kessens and delayed the marina's construction by two months. 12,000 Ackmans are installed along the breakwaters to help absorb wave energy. The breakwaters are composed of 11 meter tall caissons, which are filled with concrete, sand, and water to make them stronger and stay in place. When the marina was initially constructed, dredging was necessary so that the massive concrete caissons could be installed. There is a very strong longshore drift west to east, and the marina blocks longshore transport. Thus, the harbor acts as a groin and causes a wider beach updrift of the marina. The beach surrounding the marina is a sand and shingle mix, and after storms a lot of shingle is pushed up along the shore, and the beach becomes very steep. An interesting insight into the possibility of innovation at this site has been the proposal of putting turbines into the caissons to harness wave and tidal energy. Coastal protection has been implemented at Rhodian School. There is an undercliff seawall that helps stop cliff erosion. Seawalls additionally exist at Peacehaven, where there is a large exposure to southwest waves. Concrete seawalls are one form of coastal protection that has been used along the coast in this area. It reflects the people's needs to hold on to what they own, and in some situations, it may be the only thing they can do to protect their land and properties from failing cliffs due to wave action at the bottom of the cliffs. These types of walls can also be seen at Rottingdean. In Rottingdean, rock groins have also replaced the old wooden groins and help capture longshore drift. New Haven is a very flat area that is partially protected by a western breakwater. The breakwater allows ships to enter into the port, but the area is an estuary and is tidal. The combination of rain and high tide can create very wet conditions. Seaford is one example of where beach renourishment has been used. One terminal groin exists. Periodically, diggers move the sediment and material that was transported due to longshore drift to its original location. This is called beach recycling. The beach contains a lot of shingle, thus absorbing water and not letting the oncoming waves and water get very far up the beach. This helps protect coastal settlements. This method has proved to be very The Cuckmere estuary is flat and prone to flooding. It is more undeveloped compared to New Haven. Currently, stakeholders are questioning how restoring the river flow in the estuary by letting the channel that carries water to the ocean to the estuary's west will affect the town's depth stream. Flint is present in the sea cliffs of many areas along the southern coast. In these areas, it is often used for garden walls. The cliff material at Burling Gap is chalk with flint bands. The area where the cliffs have failed more substantially has a weaker composition. This is the depression of Burling Gap. Most of the beach material is eroded flint. This is because when the cliffs fail, the chalk dissolves quickly, but the flint does not. Burling Gap is a clear example of natural erosion, and the area has been left to be an example of natural erosion. Sea cliffs, such as the ones at Burling Gap, often fail because the waves attacking them are from the bottom. Then, due to lack of support, they fall. However, cliffs can still fail through rain and frost seeping through them. The buildings at Burling Gap and the Bell Tout Lighthouse attest to this. 
The Bell Tauk Lighthouse was moved 17 meters back from the cliff to protect it from cliff failure. At Eastbourne, the main form of coastal protection is through groins. The groins were redone using green heart timber, and the beach was recharged with material from the Isle of Wight. Off the coast, the area that they got this material is designated as a marine area, so they had to be careful with this process. While the longshore drift is predominantly west to east, the effects of a recent storm at the time these shots were taken caused an east to west drift that is clearly visible. Therefore, the groins had to be designed to handle drift from both directions. The posts had to be piled into the beach enough to withstand a differential load of 3 meters of shingle on both sides. Thus, the groins have additional bracing. A lot of money was spent at this site. The groins cover one mile of beach and are placed approximately every 100 meters. Further down the beach, past the promenade was not protected in any manner for quite a while, and the evidence of additional erosion is visible. The older part of Eastbourne has had defenses for much longer, and thus it protrudes slightly further into the ocean than the eroded areas. At the top of the beach is a seawall along the promenade. The gates allowing access to the beach can be closed when a high tide waves are coming, so that seawater doesn't reach the road and the buildings are kept dry. The beach is composed of rather coarse shingle, but it is meant to match the conditions, not the tourist demands. At Pevensey Bay, the beach is managed as a public-private partnership. It is the world's only PPP, PFIC, defense contract. The Environment Agency is the client, and four different contractors periodically dredge off the coast and then replenish the beach. The remnants of older groins exist, but have been abandoned to take on this new strategy. The project partnership lasts 25 years, and it oversees the maintenance of 9 kilometers of beach. The shingle moves faster than it is being replaced on the beach. There is a 20,000 to 30,000 cubic meter net loss per year. At Pevensey Bay, they let the shingle move. Then, they get machines and trucks to move it back. The more time shingle is left to move, the further it has to be moved back, thus costing more money, so time between storms and movement is minimized. One clear case of inappropriate development here is a large white property close to the shore built in the 1930s. Additional artificial protection of this area is necessary, which has reshaped the beach into an undesirable shape. If it wasn't there, they could place shingles at one end of the naturally smooth bay and let the sea take them around. This building disrupts that process. The beach slope is 1 to 7 after a storm, and 1 to 10 after replenishment. A certain amount of material is placed on the high water line of the beach during replenishment, or rainbowed to the high water line. This helps prevent cliffing of the shingle, and helps protect the inland structures. Hastings has heavy stone groins at the west end of the promenade. They have a primary core with a little wood on top. The primary purpose of beach improvement here was to avoid flooding. The breakwater at the fishing harbor basically acts like a very large groin, helping give shape to the harbor. Beach renourishment additionally occurs at the east end. The pier at Hastings suffered extensive damage due to a recent fire in 2010, but is estimated to be completed in summer 2015. At Rockinore near Hastings, a section of the clip collapsed into the water in January 2014, demonstrating how waves can undermine the stability of sea cliffs.